Travis, Playboy Cardi, Yeet. Remember Yeet? Big rapper. For a time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, influential rapper. Like, extremely influential. Like, hit at the exact right moment in the pandemic where I think people were locked in and just sort of being like, what's a new thing? And, like, all of a sudden, there was just all this energy coalesced around Yeet. And Yeet is someone who I think took the kind of Cardi blueprint, deepened it, made it a little bit more like less gothic and more theatrical and maybe even a little bit more fun. And then that becomes a thing that an entire kind of like one or two generations after that run with a lot of the music that, you know, we're going to talk about kind of like rage 3.0 or just noise rap or whatever, you know, whatever our friends at Nobels are talking about. Yeah. Go to that website. Yeah. Go to Google Nobels. Nobels. Um, Read about some underground rap music. It's great stuff. Um, But uh a lot of that just feels like started with Yeet. Yes. And with like Benny X and working on Dying and Yeet's yeah, yeah, producer like, group. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but again, yeah, it's, I texture. Think it's texture. It's texture rap. It's texture rap. And I do think we're in this interesting place where the undergrounds, however you want to use that term, have really splintered. Right. You have you're thinking of the rap underground right now. Maybe you're talking about like Earl and Alchemist and Mike and navy blue i don't know like maybe you're talking about like that underground like larry june yeah larry june right people like this armand hammer you know yeah. like people i like i'm sure there are people listening to this episode like ripping when like, are they gonna yeah and they're billy like, woods yeah and they're like billy like rap is in a great place like billy woods you know which like <laughs> fine like yes if you're into <laughs> like they're 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 not the travis scott guy but they're no, similar they're the shade, to the travis they, scott and guy. in many ways i think it is sort of like shade four or five with a phd yeah like, or young shade yeah. four or five Right, but but sort of like the kind of like I grew up on that, but like here's the like lightly refined artistic version of it. Which yeah. cool. Okay, then you have like the drill underground, which has anyone mentioned Shade Four or Five this much <laughs> in contemporary rap criticism <laughs> in the last ten years? Give us a show. We can syndicate deluxe on Shade Four. Actually, five. like low key, not a terrible idea. Call us. Yeah, yeah. seriously, not terrible. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine if that's our come up? <laughs> <laughs> then there's there's the drill scenes. Across the entire world. Of course. Continuing to run into the ceiling of cr- criminal. Yeah, and well, also, I mean, like, sonic scabrousness and also just. Yeah, yeah. like mm-hmm. like problems with the law uh, mm-hmm. and, and fear of problems with the law. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is self-contained sort of by, by nature of yeah. what's going on. Although we talked about this a little bit uh, bef- before we taped, but the. Uh, Cash Cobain, the Cash Cobain, rapping Andre a little Flip. bit on Andre Three Thousand, like that's a nice, that's a that's a nice moment of um, sexy drill, plus Andre Three Thousand flute music. We listen to a, a second of that. Just before we go on, while you're mentioning the Cash Cobain thing, like I'm actually been pretty surprised that we haven't seen a bunch of rappers like actually proactively try to rap on these Andre 3000 songs. Uh, there's a good would have been a good long weekend to do that. I mean, seriously. Uh, so there was a good tweet by um, Gene Doe, Gene Doe Music, uh, who says, "Y'all think Andre 3000 gonna be mad when I put a 64 bar verse on one of these flute songs?" I don't think so. We're honestly. waiting. Yeah. No, and also, like, just to circle it up, show Andre 3000 what you can do. So on you can this only kind of rap stuff. on these beats if you're over 40. Is that what you're saying? Or what? I don't know how old this person is. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> anyway, the third sort of segment of what I think of when I think of underground hip hop at the moment is what we were getting at. This sort of. <laughs> I'm Rage. never gonna forget you doing like this about Armand <laughs> Hammer. I'm never gonna forget it, it was that. A, I was inhabiting a character. You really were. <laughs> <laughs> There's this Rage 3.0 yeah. noise rap stuff. We and, mentioned Nobel's legitimately good website for covering mm-hmm. yeah, what's yeah. happening beneath Rap Caviar and the Billboard yes. rap chart that we just read off of. They have a new column uh, that's Mono and Milan. The future of rap is noisy as hell. Yes. And like, I clicked through some of these SoundCloud links. <laughs> Man, it is noisy as hell. It sure is. And somehow, we both were landed, we both landed on the same guy. The future of rap. Yes. 
uh, don't don't quote the future no, rap. I mean, just fine, quote uh, it, whatever. But then you have to quote all this part too. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Uh, so we both um, uh, we both land on the same guy who is Netspend. <laughs> yes, the same child who is Netspend. Uh, yes, I don't know how old Netspend is. Uh, so Netspend uh, has had a bunch of like viral TikTok snippets over the last few months. Uh, I spent a long car ride this weekend like playing the whole catalog and also like net spend radio, which is just like, I mean, some algorithmically generated, if you like, R-I-Y-L type stuff. Um, net spend, I think, is really good, uh, but it sounds... It's strong. You should come out strong. Yeah. No, pro I think it's net good. spend. Yeah, yeah, pro net This spend. is like, to be clear, this is like a skinny white teenager. Yes. Who... Uh, Sure. Uh, yeah, who who has gone viral both for his music and for people being like, are we sure we want to let rap music be this? Be this. Right. Well, if you're Armand Hammer type, like this seems t- <laughs> this must be like the apocalypse. Yeah. But I also think like in these like whatever we're going to call it, Rage 3.0 circle, like this, nothing unusual about this in that context. Right. And there's a little um, bit of hyper pop here. There's some yeah, gexiness seems, to yeah, this I mean, music. It's, and, and also like... To go back to what I was saying about Travis, and I think this is where Travis into Gex, into Hyperpop, the fact that it's textural actually forgives is maybe the wrong word, but it essentially forgives a whole bunch of like who knows what they're talking about, you know, and whether the vocal te- the vocal content and subject matter, who knows. Um, and when I was going through, eventually we'll, we'll talk a little bit more, but I was going through the sort of like radio station, there's actually stuff that came up that was like far more clean and melodic and sort of like took some influence from this world but like kind of like rescued it a little bit and like put a little bit of sunshine on it um but net spend i think is good and i think it's like we're also overlooking soundcloud 1.0 although i guess technically it would be 2.0 if you're a sesh hollow water boys era fan but like peep x and like the particular ways in which melody and distortion were kind of like yanked into hip hop in that era. This is, it's so striking because I remember thinking even in like early Juice World, just being like, it's crazy that people are taking that stuff for granted. Like that's the starting point. And now it's like you have an entire micro scenes that just never lived in a time where Peep and Uzi weren't influential artists. And Cardi. And, the, and, Cardi, and they're the sure. only influential artists yeah. to a lot of these kids. Yeah. Um, and yet they're taking it in like pretty extreme abstract directions. 